When it comes to buying a Windows-based laptop or PC, consumers are faced with only two real choices for the maker of the CPU, Intel or AMD. We'll take a look at the history of competition between Intel and AMD and try to explain why there are just two companies in the CPU space. We have different options to choose from every day, starting from food in the highway exit or filling up gas. But this is not the case in the computer CPU world. Basically, we have two options, Intel and AMD. Despite ship shortage and supply chain constraints, global PC shipments, desktops, notebooks and workstations reached 341 million units in 2021 and it expected to grow in 2022. We have to go back to the first PC, the original IBM personal computer from 1981. IBM chose the Intel 8088 CPU to power the machine which was based on the x86 instruction set called Complex Instruction Set Computer in short form CISC. This ended being an enormously consequential choice as the IBM PC exploded in popularity and pushed lots of its competitors out of the market because of it was a versatile, well-built computer that offered great value of the money at the same time. This meant that software developers wanted to write programs for the IBM PC and compatibles that utilized x86 CPUs. Intel quickly became a very powerful name in the microcomputing CPU space. Outside says inside you will find a legacy of technological leadership. X86 is a family of complex instruction set computer CISC instruction set architectures. The 8086 is a 16-bit microprocessor chip designed by Intel between early 1976 and June 8, 1978 when it was released. The Intel 8080 is a second 8-bit microprocessor designed and manufactured by Intel. The Intel 386, originally released on 80386, later re renamed i386, is a 32-bit microprocessor introduced in 1985. The AM386 CPU is a 100% compatible clone of the Intel 80386 design released by AMD in March 1991. It sold millions of units, positioning AMD as a legitimate competitor to Intel rather than being merely a second source for x86 CPUs. Intel ended up licensing out the x86 architecture to other companies in order to keep up with the demand without having to manufacture x86 chips completely on their own, but still make money. Ironically, AMD was one of the licensee companies along with IBM and Cerix. Although Intel and AMD obviously remain rivals to this day, AMD still has an x86 license which it's used at various times to beat Intel at its own game. Obviously, their rise in lineup is one of the currently giving Intel fits, but this was also true back in 1990s when AMD started improving upon the x86 design and competing directly with the Team Blue rather than just being Intel's second source chip supplier. Although AMD was not the only x86 licensee that tried to make indoors into the market, they did have the knowledge and resources to become a serious contender as they were already a publicly traded company that had multiple chip fabs. There is no reason anyone would want a computer in their home. The infamous quote by Digital Equipment Corporation founder Ken Olsen in 1977. It's a perfect study of the prevailing corporate attitude towards personal computing in the early years. The intellectual property and associated patents have been issues in the technology business and certainly in the business of CPUs. Patents are tricky things and litigating them can be risky. In the early days, there was a routine and widespread cross-licensing in the industry. Many companies didn't want to have the fab capacity to reliably meet demand, so they would contract with other manufacturers to make the design. The Crawford 338 patent 
In 1990, Intel was granted patent 4972338 for memory management for microprocessor system. This was to be became known as the Crawford patent after its inventor, or simply the 338 patent. It deals with the content, addressable memory, page tables, etc. Essentially, how to cache and refer to memory via microprocessor efficiently. As you can see, intellectual property and patent cases are nothing new. Litigation such as Intel vs AMD for 338 patent and what is currently transpiring with Apple vs Samsung and across the mobile phone industry is a product of the rapid development of technology, the ease of copying designs and the often murkiness of what is valid patent and what is not. The term x86 is used generally to refer any 32-bit processor compatible with the x86 instruction set. We'll take a quick look at the x86 manufacturer's list. We all know the Intel Corporation, the original developer of x86 microprocessor. Second one is AMD Advanced Micro Devices that also develops computer processors and related technologies. VI Technologies is a Taiwanese manufacturer of integrated circuits, mainly motherboard chipsets, CPUs, and memory. Xeozin is a fabulous semiconductor company, joint venture between VI Technologies and the Shanghai Municipal Government. The company creates x86 compatible CPUs. Other companies like Transmeta Corporation developed low-power x86 compatible microprocessors. Cirix Corporation was a microprocessor developer. National Semiconductor specialized in analog devices and subsystem. NextGen was a private semiconductor company that designed x86 microprocessors until it was purchased by AMD. Texas Instruments designs and manufactures semiconductors and various integrated circuits. IBM, UMC, NEC are some of the companies involved in the microprocessor business. Cirix is a smaller story to cover here, who tried to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Intel's new Pentium lineup in the mid-1990s. Cirix promised big-time performance, but their chips rarely delivered and they made infamous mistake when they decided to focus on integer performance to compete with the Pentium. At the time, Cirix thought that the trend of most desktop programs using mostly integer-based processing would continue. But what actually happened is that the low-cost but powerful Pentium became so popular, developers instead coded for its floating-point unit. And if you are confused about the difference between integer and floating-point, we will take in another video. And other potential competitors late to the game compared to what teams Red and Blue were offering. Next major innovation in desktop CPU is a 64 bit developed by another AMD. Uh, it is a 64 bit version introduced with the two new modes of operation 64 and compatibility mode x 64 still powers on real mode for full backward compatibility with 8086. The AMD K8 Hammer is a computer processor microarchitecture designed by AMD as a successor to AMD K7 Athlon microarchitecture. Opitron is AMD's x86 former processor line, uh, which supported the AMD 64 instruction set architecture. VI Technologies is a Taiwanese manufacturer of integrated circuits. It was the world's largest independent manufacturer of motherboard chipsets. The VA Nano is a 64-bit CPU for personal computers. The VA Nano was released by VA Technologies in 2008. 15 years ago, Steve Jobs ditched our PC for Intel processors in Mac computers. Qualcomm is a huge force in the mobile space ARM-based chips. Apple made headlines recently non-X86 M1 processor, offers impressive performances. Subsequently, cross licensed the technology to Intel, paving the way for modern era for x86-64 employed by all modern PCs and making it even more harder for smaller chip manufacturers to be relevant. Google Foundries and TSMC are the chip foundries. They make integrated circuits that are designed by others. ARM chips based on RISC 
and the M1 is such an ARM based uh, processor that challenges in the x86 space given the performance in the smartphones. Apple's ARM based M1 chip has been a massive success. Apple CPU might challenge Intel CPU market with the introduction of M1 chip in all Mac products. To summarize the whole reason that this stuff coming up in discussion is because so few companies are licensed to compete with Intel in the market. There's absolutely insane cost with R&D for this stuff, not to mention the actual fabrication. That's why TSMC and global foundries are successful. Sadly, it also means that barrier for entry is really, really high. It's nearly impossible for a startup to gain the momentum and financial backing to break into this industry. And even if a design is groundbreaking, it's disappointing and to some extent it can seem anti-competitive. Thanks for watching. Please provide your comments and share it. Subscribe to see more videos. Thank you.